Hey, so a few months ago, I published an automation that would do the following. Whenever I listed a new product in my Etsy store, it would take the information of the listing and automatically update my social media channels. Like it would post to Instagram, to Facebook, to Twitter, what have you, that I published a new product. And that saved me a lot of time, especially if you publish a lot of products and you hate updating your social media like I do. And then recently, one of my viewers had a great idea on how to improve that. And I took that opportunity to revisit the entire automation that I built. And I'd like to show you the improved version today. So before we jump into the new version, this is what the old version looks like. You can still find that tutorial in my videos. So basically, whenever I would create a new listing in my Etsy shop, it would update my Instagram, it would update my Pinterest, and so on and so forth. It could also publish to a Facebook page, it would also publish to Twitter, to a Telegram channel, to a Discord, um, Reddit even, so you name it, there are lots of possibilities. But what was one of the downsides of the old automation? Well, a viewer of mine has pointed out to me that Etsy recently introduced a share link. So basically they would reduce 4% of the Etsy fees if you used a special link to share uh, your products. And this is how it breaks down. So if you have a total order of $100, uh, usually the Etsy fee is 6.5% or $6.50. And if you share that via your link, and somebody buys that product via your link, they would deduct 4% of that and you would effectively pay Etsy only 2.5% fees. And where would you find those links? Well, the standard link is up here and it looks something like that. So it's just Etsy, language, listing, and then the listing ID and then the name of your product. And if you share it via your link, it looks something like this. So it has the name of your shop in here and then the listing and the listing ID. So that's quite easy to replicate for my automation. And this is what the new version looks like. So it can do exactly this. It will take the share link that reduces the Etsy fees whenever it posts to whatever social media you wanna to post to. And while I was in here, I also uh, improved something else. So I don't know about your listings, but usually listings don't have just one image. They have several images. And in the new version, you can decide how many of these pictures and even which pictures you wanna to post to Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and so on. There are a few other details in here that I will go through step by step when I, when I show you how I created this thing. For example, I make sure that it won't post the same product again and again. We're saving some money on OpenAI credits, for example, but I'm going to show you step by step on how I did that. Now, if you don't want to recreate that step by step, you can buy the entire scenario in my Gumroad store. I can also set that up for you if you like. That's called a setup session. It's also available in my store. And if you don't want to buy anything, but just support me in other ways, I have a virtual tipping jar, a free email newsletter, you can write me if you have another great idea or just like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. All right, so let me walk you through the automation step by step. So it starts with an RSS feed. So what does it mean? Well, it's really easy. Let's have a look at the first module. So what Etsy lets you do is just use the link with the store name and add RSS at the end. And that leads you to something that looks a little bit weird. But what this is, is basically all the listings that I have in my shop in a computer readable format. So whenever I publish a new listing, this computer readable listing list will get updated with the title of the listing, the description of the listing, the price, and so on and so forth. So basically everything we need to post to social media. And this is the first module that you can set up. It's basically called retrieve RSS feed items. You can also change that to watch for, out for new items, but I'm keeping it at a retrieve RSS feed items. And I will show you how to make sure that you won't post the same items over and over again in a little while. Now, if you run that once, this is what it looks like. It will retrieve the items from the RSS feed, for example, the description, the summary, and so on. But the only thing that we need uh, for the beginning is just the listing ID of the product. Now, unfortunately, the listing ID isn't one of the machine readable ones that uh, make returns. So we have to extract that from the URL that you're seeing here. And the easiest and cheapest way I found to do this is via a free call to an LLM, basically a chat GPT kind of thing. Now you just give it a prompt, extract a listing ID from a URL, and then you give it an URL and it will just return the listing ID. Now, if you wanna see how I've set this up for free, there's another video I made especially on this. Now you don't have to set it up like this. You could also ask chat GPT to do it, then it wouldn't be free, but it wouldn't be very expensive either. All right, so this will return in data choices, messages, content, the listing ID of the URL that we're trying to list, that we're trying to get the share link for. Now with that listing ID, we can get the entire listing from Etsy. And the difference of getting a listing ID from Etsy versus getting information from an RSS feed is this. In the get listing action, I also have the title and the description, but I also get the URLs to the 
images that I've published in Etsy. And that's what we want because that's what we want to post to Instagram and Facebook and so on. And how have I set this up? Really easily, I've just connected this to my Etsy store and I'm handing it over the listing ID that I've extracted in the previous module here. All right, now the Etsy module has returned all the data from the listing. And now we are going to create the captions for our social media posts. And the way I've set this up is I'm letting ChatGPT create all the different captions that I need for the different social media channels in one go. I find this easier in handling and creating the automation, but what you, you could also copy and paste basically the ChatGPT call and just say, create captions for Instagram, create captions for Pinterest, create captions for Facebook and so on. Uh, so you could uh, keep that separate if you like. So if you want to combine it, this is uh, the way to do it. So what you choose is you choose the create chat completion, you select the model that you want to call, and then I'm splitting it up into a system and a user message. The system message is always the same. I'm not going to read the prompt to you. You can pause the video and check it out. Now, the important thing is down here that I'm having it return specialized caption texts for every social media channel that I want to post to. I'm going to show you the result in a second and you will better understand um, why I did this and how this, what this looks like. And over here in the user message, I'm handing it over the description of the Etsy listing that we got from that step here. A few things to note, you have to change the response format to JSON object. You have to click yes by parse the response. And actually we want to reduce the temperature a little bit so it doesn't become too creative and reduce this to 1.8. Everything else you can leave as it. All right, so let's run this once. I'm copying the description from the Etsy listing and I'm saying run this module only and I'm posting in the description to test it. And it's going to run once and we're going to see the result. So the results are up here. And as you can see, we have uh, very clearly separated out the Pinterest title, the Pinterest caption, the Instagram caption, and so on. And you can also see that there's a tremendous difference between the, the captions, right? Because it will try to optimize the texts between the different, the different social media channels, right? So Instagram will have a little more emojis, I guess, than the Pinterest ones. So great job, ChatGPT here. And of course, you can fine tune that and give it other information in the prompt if you want to do if you wanted to add more information about your shop, for example. And now we have the listing, we have the URLs to the images, and we have the caption text. So the next thing we need to do is post that to our social media channels. So what I've done is I'm adding, adding a router and it will go from top to bottom. First, it will post to Instagram, then it will post to, to Pinterest, then it will post to a Facebook page. And I have selected a create a carousel post for this because we want to post more than one image to Instagram at a time. And the way we do this is by handing the module over an array of image URLs. And we get that from the array aggregator action in front of it. So here it's only showing one, but if you run it, you will see that it will pass multiple image URLs to that action. We're also passing it the caption text from the ChatGPT action over here, but let's focus on how we create the image URL action first. So in order to create that array, the first thing we need is the image URLs from the listing action that we got over here. Now, because there's more than one image, we need to get, first have an iterator to go through every single image and uh, extract the URLs. So that's what this iterator will do. We're handing it the images collection from the get listing module. And now make does something really clever because now we would have to build that array exactly in the form that the Instagram action likes in order to paste it. And if I just add an array aggregator, it, it will look something like this. So it will know that it will use something from the iterator in front of it, but I would now have to specify what exactly I would need the aggregator to aggregate on. Probably one of these URLs, but which ones? I don't know. And make will do this for me. So all I need to do is just connect the array aggregator to the action that follows it. And it will be smart enough to pick the right kind of thing from the iterator in front of it, right? So it will know that it will have to extract an image type and a photo URL. So that's what it's picking from the iterator. And it will map that automatically in the right way for the Instagram um, action that follows it. Now, one other thing we need to do is we need to limit the amount of images we are going to hand over to Instagram. And that's where things get a little weird because the Facebook API documentation says you can hand over 10 images to an carousel, to an Instagram carousel post. But Instagram themselves say you can put 20 images into a carousel post. So I guess it's up to you to find that out. Here's how you limit it. You limit it by adding a filter between the iterator and the aggregator. And that's how you set this up. So you give it a name that's optional, 
but what you do is you check for the bundle order position and that is something that the iterator will uh, give you. Um, that's up here, so currently it doesn't have a value, but when it runs, it will have a value. And you will tell it that it should run less than 11 times, for example, if you only want to post 10 images, or less than 21 times if you want to post 20 images, and so on and so forth. We could also combine that and say, I only want to um, post uh, the if the bundle order position is higher than 2 and less than 8, for example, if you just want to cut out the first and the last image, for example, so you can get a little creative if you like. But for now, we're going to leave it at only post the first 10 image URLs. All right, and then our Instagram uh, automation is also almost ready to, to go. Uh, the only thing I've added is I've added an error at the back. So how you do this is you could double click on the module here and you say add an error and you want to select ignore. Uh, and what this does is the following. So if the posting to Instagram should fail, for example, it will then continue on with posting to Instagram and posting to Facebook and it will not uh, stop the automation completely. So if you want to stop the automation completely, you can, of course, ignore that error, but I like to continue uh, and just uh, don't worry about this. All right, let's continue with posting to Pinterest. Um, it looks basically the same. The only thing that will change is the array aggregator, and that will change when you connect it to the Pinterest action behind it. So it will automatically update and know what information to give it. You can also then paste in the Pinterest title and the Pinterest caption here. And here we are also creating that unique share link that will reduce the Etsy fees by just pasting this in all, all the time, followed by the listing ID, because that is exactly the format of this URL that we saw here, right? It's just the store name up until listing is always the same, and then it's just followed by the listing ID, and that's enough. You don't even need the, the title of the product that follows be, behind it. This will get added to your Pinterest pins. Again, we've added uh, an ignore error at the end, so the automation will keep running. And lastly, we are posting to Facebook. And again, it will look a little bit different because here posting to Facebook will not take an array of URLs, but it will take an array of images instead. So we have to download the images before we can post them to Facebook. But the link, again, will look the same. It's the share link that we've created. And now let's uh, check out how we created the, sh the array of images this time. So we are iterating again through the images. Not sure why I put a router here, so we don't actually need that. Now what we do here is we download every single file from the URLs that we get here. And this is what the array aggregator looks like. Again, this will update automatically if you connect it to the Facebook action behind it, because it will know what kind of uh, data it, would, it needs to pass on. And we're passing it uh, just the uh, full Etsy title and the Instagram captions again from the ChatGPT step over here. But we could create uh, special Facebook captions, for example, no problem. Right, and before we are finished, there's one other thing we need to do. We need to make sure that we don't post the same listing uh, over and over again. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a little data store inside of Make, where we're going to store the listing IDs that we have already posted. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to add a module between the listing ID getter and the uh, getting listing from Etsy. And we're going to call it's called a data store. So what we're going to search for is check the existence of a record. It's going to ask us to create a data store. We're just going to click add and we're going to call it my Etsy data store. We're not going to give it a data structure because we just want to save that key and we're going to leave the size at one megabyte because it will not get very big. So just click save. And for the key, we will enter the listing ID we got from the module in front of it. So just messages, choices, messages, content. All right, that will check if that listing ID is already in here. So let's run that once and see if it works. And of course, it comes back with false because we haven't saved anything into it. So now we're setting up a filter to check if it's a new listing or not. So we're just going to call it new listing. And what we're going to do is we're going to check the answer from that data store search. And if it if exists is not equal to false, the automation will continue. So the next thing we need to do is save the, the listing that we've posted to the data store. For that, we're going to create a new route in this router because it always goes from top to bottom. So it will always go this, this, and this. And lastly, it will go down here. And what we're going to do down here is again search for data store and then add or replace a record. We're going to select our Etsy data store. And for the key, we're just going to paste in the listing ID again. Make sure to not overwrite an existing record and click OK. And then auto align everything so everything looks nice and neat. And that should be about it. So every time the automation will run, uh, all this would happen. It will post to Instagram, Pinterest, and Facebook. And in the end, it will save the listing ID of the product that it has posted. And if we run it automation again, it will not run for a listing ID that has already been saved. 
All right, and just like that, we've created an automation that will post to any social media channels of our choosing every time we create a listing, fully automatically. And it will add a link that will save us 4% of Etsy fees every time somebody clicks on it and buys something from it. And speaking of buying, you can buy the entire automation that I, you saw here to just import with one click into your make account and don't have to set up every single thing. And if you don't want to do this either, I'd be happy to set this up for you, no problem. And as always, please feel free to subscribe to my newsletter and like this video if you enjoy this. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.